Next, we are going to talk about the sources that you bring to a speech. Uh, I know that it's much easier just to say, hey, you know, I know enough information about Facebook. I can give a speech without citing a source. So let me give you an example. What if I said, today my goal is to persuade you not to eat hamburgers, drink Cokes, or eat candy because it's bad for your health? Hmm. How would you feel about that? I'm not a dietitian. Nope. Don't have a degree in dietitia. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a doctor. So, why would you believe me? Hmm. Well, for some reason, when I teach students how to put together speeches, they hear this lecture, they go through an exercise, and then they cite no sources. When you do not cite sources, but you give information from a source, you've engaged in plagiarism, and that's a no-no. There's, uh, There have been, a, if you just Googled, movie stars plagiarize there is a I can't remember her name but she was a big news person and she got caught plagiarizing and her career kind of went down just a little she used to be up on top got caught plagiarizing kind of went down plagiarizing someone else's thoughts is just as bad as plagiarizing in a paper so in an essay if you write down a thought and you don't give credit where credit is due, then you are engaging in plagiarism. So, for instance, there are several different sources that you should use. Sources and support. So, a source is saying information that you want to say. So, um, if I'm talking to you about running and... Um, I want to use a book about running. So I have a book here about running. And you, you see I have it all, you know, because there's some interesting information in here. I can pull from my book, and this is a source. I can say, according to Galloway, um, when you're uh, working towards a half marathon, he says the drills, you should use drills to make running faster and easier. That's, that's a source. Supporting that source would be, you know, I'm going to tell you um, a lay testimony. Okay? I'm a runner. I enjoyed, as a matter of fact, I haven't been able to run in the last two weeks because I've been sick. And so I'm really upset about that. I'm a little freaking out about it. And so I, I'm going to tell you a story. When I tell you a story just based on my experience, that's lay testimony. So I'm going to use one lay testimony in the speech as support to the source. So when I say you need three sources, this is the source, okay? This is the source. A newspaper is the source. A magazine is a source. And a journal, this is a journal. A journal is a source. But when I tell you a specific story, that's my lay testimony. So I might say, you know, this the past couple of months I have been doing drills here and there so that I could take time off of uh, my mile, every mile that I run. You know, ever since I've done these drills, what it's done is it's taken 30 seconds off, 20 seconds off, and you know, every little bit helps. Okay, that's that's just a lay person testimony. Whereas when I cite the information out of this book, this is the source. The book is the source. So when I say cite a source, this is the source. When I say lay testimony, that's me. Okay, I need three sources. I could use a book, a magazine, I mean a newspaper, a magazine, a journal. That's a source, okay? I need three of those. I think that's for your assignment, three. But along with those three, I'm going to use some supporting information, which would be my lay testimony, okay? Uh, scientific research findings. Let's see. I'm going to go to the journal and just flip through it and see if I can find some scientific findings somewhere about distance learning students. Let's see. 
All right. According to the American Journal of Distance Education, Volume 24, Number 4, October, December 2010, it states that the learner roles of engagement, as defined by Conrad and Donaldson, who call this concept phases of engagement, emphasize that the time must be dedicated for people to become completely oriented to the community. community. Okay, so this is information, scientific information from a journal. Scientific information from the same journal, let me see. Let's see here what it says, scientific journal. Hmm. Trying to find something that makes kind of sense here. When you see numbers like 40% of this, 20% of that, um, that's something that's a scientific journal. You know, they might say, mm, I do think I saw a stat about Facebook that said 7 out of 10 people have a Facebook account. Either 7 or 8, 10 people uh, have a Facebook account. So if you have 10 people, 7 or 8 of them have a Facebook account. So that's some... Um, um, scientific research findings. So when you're trying to convince someone in an audience to believe information, having scientific information makes it uh, more makes your information more believable. You can also have expert testimony. Let's say that I invited someone to come talk to us about. Let's see. Hmm. That's how I was going to give a speech on Facebook, and I brought someone in who is a social media guru who has their own site. They make a business out of it, and they come and talk to us about it. That's expert testimony. If our speech had to do with something medical, or maybe it was with eating eating healthy, and I brought in a dietitian, that would be expert testimony. So you can have expert testimony, lay testimony, scientific research findings, stats, anecdotes. Um, any personal stories. Sometimes I like to start speeches off with quotations. So let's say that I was going to give you a quotation. I'm looking through a magazine right now. And I love, one of my favorite magazines is the, um, the Harvard Business Review. Uh, okay, here we go. You know, we were talking about media, which is technology in the workplace. I told you how to deliver a speech on that. So this information comes from the Harvard Business Re Review, December 2012 issue, page 12. That's how you cite a source, okay? C-I-T-E. It says, uh, technology is altering the media, media business dramatically um, and irreversibly. Given uh, given changing reader habits and the huge potential cost savings in, in going from print to digital, we at HBR feel nearly certain that we will be fully digitally published one day. So if I were talking about social media, I might use that as a, as, um, a quotation to start the presentation off, to end the presentation, to make a point of something within the presentation. Putting together information such as surveys, something that when you deliver your informative or your persuasive speech, you'll be asked to go onto Blackboard and ask your peers what they think about a topic before you select it. You might want to poll them. You might want to put a question out there and um, get a survey so that you can say, according to the survey that I did with our class, here's the information, blah, blah, blah. 12 out of 15 20% of, 30% of my peers believed, blah, blah, blah. That holds a lot of weight. Libraries, meta search engines. I use Google search, Google academic search for a lot of searches that I do. What this does is when you bring information in that is current, current meaning five years. If it's over five years old, it's really not considered current. Uh, it brings credibility to you, credibility to your speech. It brings quality to your speech. It brings um, reliability. Uh, people re are relying on 
the information that you have. And when you are a more credible speaker and you're a more trustworthy speaker, then people are more likely to believe your information in an informative speech. And if you're trying to persuade someone to change a value, to change a belief, to change a behavior, they're more likely to do it if you put together a speech that has, has all of these uh, different um, supporting materials in it. For instance, I used to not cycle. And then I would say about eight years ago, I had a student who delivered a persuasive speech on recycling. And he had some of the best sources that I have ever heard. And because of his excellent persuasive speech, he was credible. His topic was credible. His sources were credible. He had a fantastic, he delivered it well. He has, I have been recycling ever since. Um, and it was because of this student's speech. So when you're thinking about putting your information together, pull from all different places, magazines, journals, okay, books, newspapers, radio stations, that you all put all that information together um, for your research, for your speech.